Hello, I am Dr. Darnita L. Payton, and my purpose is to educate, encourage, and enlighten. Thank you so much for taking the time to stop by my channel today. I am so grateful that you are here. Before you leave, give this video a thumbs up, leave a comment, subscribe, and turn on the bell notification. Do me one favor, tell at least five people you know about my channel. I would greatly appreciate it. So today, we are going to talk about five productive habits that you can start right now to save money and time. I'm so excited. Right, yeah, we're going to let that just sink in. If you notice, that's a prevailing theme in a lot of my videos. So if you've not seen my Simple Life video series, I'll link that where I talk about five simple ways to save money. Because it's just so important. We can do so much more if we are financially sound. And having a budget just literally tells your money, hey, this is where I want you to go this month. And no, you're not going there this month. I'm going to put you over here this month, <laughs> this year, for the next 10 years. A budget just simply says, I'm going to spend this much on this thing or not spend that much on that thing. It's just simply a way of telling your money what you want it to do. So have a budget and more importantly, use your budget. I've had too many people say, sure, I have a budget. And then I'll say, well, how are you, how's that working for you? And they say, oh, I don't use it. Okay. So as important as having a budget is actually using your budget. Again, another prevailing theme because I am a big fan of keeping as much of my money as I can. And if there are times when I have to buy something or something, you know, there's a need or something breaks, I want to save as much money as I can. So I want to make sure that I utilize the circulars or um, if you use an app on your phone to know what the sales are, whatever it is, you want to make sure that you shop sales. Now, let me put a caveat behind this one. Buy in bulk. I'm not encouraging you to go clear out the shelves. I'm not encouraging you to hoard, to buy more than you need. But there are certain things that we know that we're going to need in abundance. There will likely never be a time that we don't need uh, paper products like toilet paper. And if you don't use paper towels, then this is not for you. Or toothpaste or deodorant or you know, things that you use for your family on a regular basis. If there are food items that are a great price that week and you can afford it, it's in your budget, stock up on those things because you know you're going to use them and need them. For me, I love um, chicken and ground turkey. So whenever I see, and sausage, turkey sausage, whenever I see those things on sale, I tend to buy, you know, 10 to 20 of those or whatever the limit is because I know that I'm going to use those on a regular basis and why not pay less for them knowing that those are things that I'm going to use anyway. Again, your products, your personal care products or food or um, anything that you know that you're going to use on a regular basis and it's just not going to sit there taking up space, I would encourage you to buy in bulk. But don't buy in bulk and let it go to waste because then you've defeated the purpose of shopping a sale and buying in bulk to save money because you've actually lost money. So buy in bulk with intention. I love a good meal plan. Now I'm a person, I like leftovers. I don't trust people who don't like leftovers. I, I just don't. I don't trust people who don't like water, who don't like leftovers and who pack lightly. <laughs> I'm kidding. No, I'm not. No, I am kidding. But I love leftovers. So I like to know um, what I'm going to have maybe for the entire week or sometimes as I'm feeling kicky, um, I'll go the entire month because I've already shopped the sales and I've already uh, bought in bulk. So I know the things that I'm going to have. So that may be, as I said, where I bought 12 pounds of turkey, uh, ground turkey or 12 pounds of chicken breast, chicken thighs or chicken legs. Sidebar, there was a time I didn't like dark meat. And then you know, I started shopping for myself. <laughs> and the prices are so much cheaper than the chicken breast. And they really do have so much flavor. And I promise you, this is not going to turn into a cooking channel. But if you um, 
use a slow cooker and really, really season the food well, you don't even know that you're eating, you know, dark meat if you don't like dark meat. Um, so that was just a little bonus. Or if you grill it, I said you could grill a shoe and it would taste good. Now I'm not encouraging you to grill a shoe, but I'm just saying you could grill a shoe and it would probably taste <laughs> really good, but don't do that. Am I going to have to put a disclaimer in this video? Do not go and grill a shoe. But yeah, so I want to encourage you to meal plan. And that simply means while you're, you know, shopping those sales, buy things that you know that you could put into your weekly meal plan. Or if you're a long-term planner like I am, maybe for a month. When, after I buy in bulk and, you know, do all of my cooking, I know for the next six months um, what I could have to eat. And what I would just have to do is maybe add a fresh vegetable or some fruit you know, when carbs and sugar are my friend. <laughs> but I know what I have and what I can use for my meal planning. And it doesn't have to be elaborate. So don't go out and buy the fancy meal planning containers. You know, a simple glass uh, container with the top. Or if you use plastic, nobody's going to come after you because we are a nice bunch here. that um, you can meal plan or even something as simple as uh, those zip top bags because they're reusable. Um, that will be a way for you to save space while you're meal planning as well, unless you have unlimited space to, to freeze all of your, uh, all of this uh, cooking that you're going to do for your meal planning. So that is an excellent idea. Meal planning is delightful. Get the kids involved, get your spouse involved, make it a family thing. And if you're single, well, you know, you can still ask people to help you <laughs> or just do it for yourself. It's a really fun experience, meal planning. And it helps you also not to uh, shop impulsively because you're going with a list. You already know the things that you want to put into your meal plan. And it also helps you not to um, eat just out of boredom or uh, to eat the wrong things because you already have things in place already planned. Uh, for your meal. So it's a win-win all the way around. <laughs> now there's a young lady here on YouTube. I will put her channel down in the description box and maybe she can help us out with some delightful meals that we can cook in bulk. Go over and show her channel some love. She has delightful recipes. So maybe she'll come up with some that can help you uh, in the bulk cooking of it all. But again, in addition to the meal planning, after I've shopped the sales and, you know, looked at my budget to see what it is that I can afford for, you know, this week, this month, however it is that you do your budget. I love taking a Saturday and just going all in. You know, I have my slow cooker. Which Which is your best friend. If you don't have a slow cooker, it, use that. I don't encourage you to buy things. But if you don't have a slow cooker, you are missing out. Now, I've also heard good things about an Instant Pot. But I don't have one. So I can't say you know how well they work or not. But I can vouch for my slow cooker. It is one of my favorite kitchen gadgets. And so I would encourage you to get one of those if you don't. Because it's easy cooking. You just put things in there. And I suggest that you use a liner. Because Cleaning one of those bad boys can be a chore. <laughs> Use a liner. It makes cleanup so much easier. But you just take what you're going to cook and you prepare it and you season it and let it marinate and you put it on for six or eight hours and go about your day and you come back and, oh, and the house smells so delightful and you really haven't done a lot of work. So as I was saying, I would take a Saturday and just cook for as many hours as I need to so that I don't have to cook every day. Because although I enjoy cooking, I'm not really a big fan of cooking every day. If I can save time in any way, I will do it. And bulk cooking definitely does that. And as I promised, this is not going to become a cooking channel, but I will leave in the description box what my uh, season mix is. It is simple and it's so delicious. And my family teases me that 
Um, I use the same season mix for everything, so everything tastes the same. It really does it, but I do. Um, I'm a creature of habit, but I will put it down in the description box. Um, but if you're looking for measurements, I, I'm cooking like my grandmother cooked. She would, you know, she'd be at the stove and bam, she'd throw something in. He said, what was that? How much did you use? And she'd say, this much or that much. So, you know, it's to your taste. But I will put that down in the description box. And it's very simple. For example, if I was using, um, you know, 12 pounds of my ground turkey or whatever the chicken was that was on sale, I would use onion soup mix, onion powder, garlic powder, chili powder. Anybody noticing a theme? Uh, black pepper, soy sauce, Worcestershire sauce, and a teriyaki marinade. Now, if you have problems with sodium, you could get the lower sodium um, brand or, and you notice I didn't add any salt. Uh, so that would reduce the sodium as well. And that's just a mix that I always have on hand. Those are ingredients that I always use when I'm bulk cooking on a Saturday. And then I take, you know, whatever it is that I fix and I put them into individual serving containers. And then I freeze them and just defrost as I need for each meal. So at the end of a long day, if I'm really tired or really don't feel like cooking, um, I always know that there's something in the freezer or the refrigerator available and I don't have to really think about it. And I found that the fewer choices that I have when I'm thinking about what to eat, uh, the better choices that I make because I'm limiting what it is that I have and I'm less likely to you know, eat out of emotion or anything like that because I view food as energy and as a gift that God has given me because I need to survive. So, and as someone who could easily be an emotional eater, these um, habits really, really do help. Um, in addition to helping you save money and time, um, it can help you, you know, just in your everyday life, especially if, as we're talking about food, that you have issues with emotional eating or you eat because you're bored or just because you don't feel like cooking, you just, you know, grab the quickest thing. This would definitely help. So I hope that these five productive habits that you can start right now to save money and time have been beneficial. Thank you so much for taking the time to stop by today. And if no one has told you today how awesome you are, I want you to know that you are absolutely, positively awesome. Take care. God bless. Bye.